There's a lot of work on probiotics, prebiotics. There's a lot of clinical studies that have been done on post-antibiotic use because a lot of people coming out of an antibiotic regimen, especially a severe one where you've had to do multiple rounds, that decimates the microbiome. And a lot of people coming out of that struggle dietarily, right? Sensitivities are up, digestive issues are up. I mean, there's a lot of things that can occur. And clearly the microbiome's been transformed and it needs to rebound. It could take up to a year to rebound with a lot of hard work on your microbiota. And in that journey, you're going to be experiencing a lot of shortcomings that you were again counting on those guys to do for you the keystone probiotics that live in you how hard they are to grow that's the same for like we take an antibiotic they're the first ones to die like they're so inequipped that's why a lot of people tell, they recommend eating yogurt while taking an antibiotic just to try and like supplement that a little bit fermented foods i mean it's an important part of the regimen there's a lot of work that's been done on probiotics prebiotics we're beginning to do and see more work being done in the fermented food space and it still, though, it's in its infancy because most fermented foods are not derived from human-based organisms. These are organisms that are industrial, right? They're doing all this work for you on a product in a jar or in a tank. That work's all being done by these organisms that have certain tools to eat that food and ferment and create these byproducts, these what we call postbiotics in any ways. Those guys do an amazing job. And once we learn that, you know, there's been a number of labs, people out of the Gordon Lab and and Sonnenberg's where they looked at different fermented foods and said, are these all good for you? And the answer was no, they're not all good for you. 